Welcome to the Thriving Artist Podcast, where we share strategies and support for artists to thrive. We know that the art world can feel like a lonely place, and we want to provide a network of support, impactful strategies, and an abundance of encouragement to help you grow your authentic art career. We're your hosts. I'm Jamie Smith. And I'm Kaylin Butine, and we are also the co-founders of the Thrive Together Network, a community of female and non-binary identifying artists and artists who are caregivers. We truly believe in community over competition, and we're so glad you're here. Enjoy this episode. Welcome to this episode of the Thriving Artists Podcast. I'm Kaylin Butine, one of your hosts, and I'm currently making a big quilt from my late grandfather's flannel shirts a very meaningful summer project. And I'm Jamie Smith, and my current project is I'm drawing my own tarot deck. I currently have 11 out of 78 drawings <laughs> done. I'd love to be able to celebrate that, but it feels very daunting how many more there are to go. So it is going to be a while, but I'm really enjoying the process. <laughs> Uh, And we are here today to share an episode with you on time blocking. We're going to share our five tips for using this strategy effectively and getting the results that you want. So time blocking, if you've never heard of this concept, what it is, it is, is, it is a time management method where you divide your day into blocks of time. Each block is dedicated to accomplishing a specific task or a group of tasks and only those specific tasks. So the length of each time block can vary, but typically a time block lasts between one and four hours. Time blocking feels like a gift you are giving yourself, the best kind of gift. And instead of wading through your day and wondering what to prioritize and when you should do it and how are you ever going to find the time, it's having a plan to do things in a certain block of time. It gives you structure and it really provides a flow to your day and your week as a whole. I love to even think of time blocking from an artist standpoint. When I block out studio time, I just have this big block in my week. Usually it's on Thursdays. That's a, you know, four to five hour chunk of time. That's studio time. I might have specific things that I want to prioritize or get done within the studio in that time block. But just knowing that that whole chunk of time is my studio time really helps me open up my creativity. It helps me get into the flow and allows for a freedom and kind of an experience within that block in that space, even if it's just mental that I'm making it up in my head. Um, Okay, so let's jump in and share our five tips for time blocking effectively. The kind of five points that we're going to break down for you are these. We're going to schedule and assess. We're going to talk about prioritizing. We're going to talk about prepping. We're going to talk about a buffer and why you need one. And we're going to close the loop and reconnect back to a reassessment time. It's a full circle situation here. Full circle. So first up, let's talk about scheduling and assessing. This seems probably pretty obvious. Um, But in my book, the key to getting anything done effectively is the time you put in to think through what needs to get done and then plan for that to happen. So for me, scheduling and assessing happens um, multiple times. It happens on a daily, a weekly, and then a monthly basis. So each day I take a few minutes to run through my agenda to sort of make my priorities um, and make sure my head is screwed on correctly, which doesn't always happen, but kind of just connecting with, okay, today's Monday. What am I doing on Monday? What did I already decide needs to happen on Monday? Um, My weekly scheduling and assessing is probably my most important. Um, I usually make this happen on Sunday evenings. Sometimes if I don't feel like it on a Sunday, I'll bump this to Monday morning and spend kind of the first hour of my Monday doing this. But this is really where I sit down and I spend 30 to 60 minutes thinking through what needs to happen in the week ahead. 
and when I will get it done. Um, and then I also do some scheduling and assessing on a monthly basis, usually at the end of the month when I'm planning for the next month. Um, this is really useful for kind of blocking out larger project based work into time blocks or kind of looking at things overall from a monthly perspective. Um, Jamie, I'm wondering when you block your time um, and kind of when do you generally prep for the week? Yeah, for me, I actually look at it more as a wrap up of my week. So this all happens for me on Friday. So I try to, instead of squeezing in the last task, I actually take an hour uh, which feels like a lot, but you actually need it to do this type of things well and to really prep and plan. And I will actually kind of wrap up the week. So what I love about this is I get to look at my checked off list of things. Love a good list. Love a gold star. <laughs> So it's all checked off and I get to feel proud of myself for a hot minute until I start my next list about what's going to happen next week. And what I'll actually do is when I write out my list for next week, I actually look at it from like, what's a Monday block, Tuesday, Wednesday, and put it in that way. And then I feel really ready for the next week. And then I can have a great weekend without thinking about anything. And Monday, I only need about five minutes to kind of get reset, reorganized, and then I start my my plan. So I really, really enjoy it. Okay. I think I was just convinced to change my scheduling and assessing to Fridays. I love that idea. I love the idea or kind of using it at the end to close the loop and then guiding you into another, but doing it between your weekend so that you can have that task kind of already done and off yeah, your plate. Because so. Sunday is just for laziness. Yeah. I love know? that. So I'm really proud of you on a Sunday that you've been <laughs> you've been mapping out your week. I I'm on the couch. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> hey, whatever works, right? But I, mm -hmm. I think it's fun to learn from each other and try like new ways of you know doing this. Um I just wanted to mention too that I use my manifesting mag magic planner for my studio and my personal scheduling and assessing. Um, that planner, the Manifesting Mag Magic Planner for Artists is available on Amazon. And it um, is the one that I designed and created for the artist mother community. Um, but it's an undated planner that anyone can use um, to kind of plug in their studio goals. And there's some reassessment and scheduling tools in there. Um, and then Jamie and I use the project management tool Asana. We just use the free version of Asana. Um, it's a great tool. There's lots of wonderful things that you can do with it. Um, and we use that to schedule and assess all of the stuff that we do for the Thrive Together Network for this podcast and, you know, all of the many things we do for um, the platform that we run. We got to keep it organized somewhere, yes. not just in our little heads. It's right. got to gotta be put somewhere. So our second step of time blocking effectively is to prioritize. And this one I think can be very hard because without having a priority, you just have a lot of things going on mm -hmm. swirling around. So this is definitely, you know, wrapped into that first step of time blocking because now we need to decide what goes where, what gets put in the schedule. So we really wanted to make our own another, this is its own tip here is prioritizing. So it's really finding a way to identify what is important and what is urgent. So we want to make sure that the time blocks that you're creating reflects this. And especially when something is important or has a lot of needs, a lot of your energy, really thinking through where that should land in your week and in your day. So if you're best in the mornings, that's when, you know, this sort of these higher uh, value items should be placed. And I, a little tip I always use is I think about when I'm trying to figure out how to prioritize is looking at my, my tasks and thinking about what task could unlock a task for someone else. So if mm -hmm. I get something done that then I send off to Kaylin and then she can work on that, continue to get that work done, or it helps her kind of move forward on a step, that is something that would be a high priority to me. So if you're working in a team or in a collaboration, or you have a, a gallery you're working with, those are great ways to kind of think through a priority because your work can then help the, the whole project move forward. 
So mm. I really like that. Such, such great um, wisdom there, Jamie. Uh, two other things that I wanted to share about prioritizing um, kind of two big things for me that I do to help me figure out what to prioritize is, of course, to look at my deadlines, right? Um, to see what is coming up on the calendar and what needs to get done now because the deadline is running out. So kind of comparing, you know, the scheduling and assessment to my calendar and to to my list of deadlines and seeing what I need to prioritize from there. And then one of my favorite tried and true um, ways to assess my time and what, what I want to do and how I want to spend my energy is to name what matters. This is a principle that I learned um, from the Lazy Genius podcast from Kendra, Kendra Adachi, the host there. Um, but I just love this idea of naming what matters. So connecting with kind of what is pressing on your heart, maybe what is, you know, what you're always thinking about, what is stressing you out, maybe what's inspiring you, deciding what matters most to you this week or in this moment and letting that guide the way um, for how you prioritize your time blocks is kind of another tip or way to think about it. I really love that. And I think about... You know, when I think about my Friday wrap up, it's sometimes I think, what would help future Jamie on Friday a lot? So yes. I love when you say, you know, pressing on your heart or honestly, what's stressing you out. There's mm -hmm. some things that just hang over my head. And I think, you know, how would it feel on Friday to have that just off the list, like yeah. gone, uh, it can also help me with prioritizing. Absolutely. On this episode of the Thriving Artist Podcast, we are featuring our virtual artist residency program. All members of the Thrive Together Network are invited to participate in our community-wide artist residency. For the month of September, we are committing to a specific goal, putting our heads down and digging in. Kaylin, the big question is, what is an artist residency and how is this any different from regular studio time? Great question, Jamie. An artist residency is a structure or a container from which you build or grow something specific that's related to your art career. So this structure is a set aside time. It's a special time in order for you to focus and commit to your practice or a specific goal that you have. Yes, and what I love so much about an art residency is that it can offer different artists different goals for the different phases of their careers. So whether you are needing time to create new work, find inspiration, you're wanting to explore new materials or do some research, this is a time to complete a specific professional practice goal. Artist residencies can really give you a kick in the butt that help you get these things completed. And in our community, the Thrive Together Network, we are focused on growth and intention, not productivity. This is about connecting to your purpose and your why as an artist, buckling down and getting something done. So we would love for you to join us. Sign up to become a network member at thrivetogethernetwork.com and learn more about the residency structure and join the flow of dozens of artists committing to an artist residency in the month of September. There's amazing power in the process of doing the artist residency as a community. Together, we are setting aside time, using the power of the network of artists to motivate, inspire, and support us. And we would love for you to join us. So please sign up by August 31st to join the artist residency happening during the, the month of September. And if you sign up two weeks earlier by August 15th, we will give you um, a couple weeks of information and prep, and we'll be kind of getting everything lined up and ready together before we begin. And of course, our artist residency program is just one of the great things we offer on the Thrive Together Network. There's no extra fees or costs to sign up for the residency once you are a Thrive Me Network member. Please find out more at thrivetogethernetwork.com. Okay, our third step to time blocking effectively is to prep. So I'm wondering where all my Enneagram sixes are at, those who prepare um, 
to the extreme for everything. Preparing in advance for your block of time can make a world of difference in how smoothly that time block goes. So for example, if Jamie and I have blocked out time to record these podcast episodes, say from 2 to 4 p.m. on a Tuesday, you better believe that on Monday or, you know, Thursday or Friday the previous week, Jamie and I are making sure that our preparations are done so that recording our time block of recording these episodes can go smoothly. So we're getting the copy written, written, we're getting the episodes cards lined up. Maybe we've reviewed the copy and, you know, other tasks. And the, the thing with doing that, I think the prep work is that it makes you go backwards in the steps involved. And I think that really helps with being realistic. So Mm -hmm. it's easy to put a time block that says record episodes. Right. But when you have to go backwards, and we actually have to time block for the time block. So (laughs) we need a block of time that is write the episode. And then we need a block of time that says review the episode. I just think it makes projects really happen. And, you know, you can actually win in your week instead of feeling like you showed up for that hour and you didn't have yourself ready to go and it didn't get done. And so it's a great way to make sure that you're prepared. Yeah. I think the preparation step helps us to be more present and focused within the block of time that we've planned to do something because we're kind of building this ramp to getting to do that thing effectively. So preparation is kind of the on ramp to get us where we want to go in a specific block of time. Um, So you can think about some ways maybe that you would prep for studio time. You could clean your brushes, lay them out, make sure your camera batteries are charged. There's lots of things that you can do to make the entry into your time block feel really good for you. Jamie, I'm wondering what is one thing that you do that is like a preparation for a specific time block to go smoothly for you? Well, like most things in my life, it involves food. So I need to make sure that I have food for the studio is like a main one for me having a really productive studio time. So then if we're just going full A type is that I need to time block to then go to the grocery store and then meal prep and then have my food for the studio. We work backwards and it's just really important to me because I have I go, you know, out of my home to a studio. My studio time is very precious. And when I get there, I want to be able to stay there for a big block of time and Mm -hmm. get into the flow. And I found if I'm not prepped, then I end up going around the corner to get a sandwich or something. And it takes, you know, it really disrupts that Mm -hmm. flow. And I do know that my work is never good when I'm hangry. So (laughs) when I have just stayed on and I'm trying to draw and I have no food, it's not good work. It's, you're not going to see it. So yeah, yeah, food's a big one for me. Um, And it's something that if I don't do, I feel, I feel it. You feel the effects. Yeah, Yeah. totally. In general, not just for studio. So Yeah. yeah, our fourth step of time blocking is to buffer. So this buffer is a really special step. And I love, Kaylin, that you had included this in the episode when we did our outline because it's something that I'm really not very good at. And I think it's just because I'm trying to fit in way too much into every moment of every day of all the times and things just take longer than you expect. So, you know, when we're thinking about being in the studio and you think I have this hour to finish up a painting, I've time blocked it blocked it in, that's if it goes perfectly well. So it's really good to, you know, spend an hour and then have a 20 minute buffer added in so that you don't feel stressed, but you could also clean the brushes, wrap up, prepare for your next stage, whatever that is, whether it's more work to do or you're off, which is amazing. So really wanting to make our time blocks feel like wins Mm -hmm. and not just rushing because you set the timer for an hour and you haven't really thought through um, that process. Yeah, I love that, Jamie. Um, I, I feel like another thing buffer time done is that it helps you not 
feel stressed, like you described, moving from one block to the next. Um, and just an example that I thought of when thinking about a buffer time um, that I implement in my own day to day is on the days that I pick up my kids from school, I know I need to leave my house at 240. Like if I'm not going to be late you know, be the last person or be be at the end of the car line. Like I have to be walking out the door at 2.40, right? Um, because of that, I need to make sure I am done, absolutely done with whatever I need to do on the days that I'm working to pick them up really by 2.20. Um, that in 2.20, that 20 minute difference between 2.20 and 2.40, um, you know, it, that is my buffer, right? That is the time that if I'm done with everything at 220, I can sit back and relax for a few minutes. I can, you know, calm myself and physically and mentally kind of exit my work day and enter into family time. But if I, if I don't plan for that buffer time, I will work until 2.39 and I will be running out the door and be super stressed and I won't have that mental preparation or that mental transition of leaving work and entering family time. Um, so buffering is a lot about like mental health, actually. <laughs> um, I just feel the mental labor of getting yourself ready to pick up three children who yes. have been at school all day and need snacks. Because yes. again, it's all about food. So yes. I'm just picturing that. And yes, you need that 20 minutes. Yes, totally. Um, and like you mentioned earlier, it, when we were talking about buffer, you know, sometimes we can't get the tasks done exactly completed in the time. And having a buffer time, even if I work till 2.30, right, I still have that buffer time. And I'm not expecting perfection of myself to like mm -hmm. get things done perfectly in the exact block of time that I planned for it. Um, okay. So our final step, our fifth step into time blocking effectively is to reassess. This step is bringing things back around to where we started, right? Um, instead of assessing forward, um, like we did with the scheduling and assessing, we're asking you to look back and consider what happened in the rear view mirror. Um, you can do this step daily or you can do it weekly, like kind of Jamie already talked about, but pausing to reflect and reassess how your time blocks went, maybe what you miscalculated, what went really well, helps us to learn and grow from how we are spending our time, right? Mm -hmm. reassessment really flows into that assessment and scheduling. They're kind of back-to-back -back sisters, right? Um, and, it, and reassessment is when you look back and see what you didn't get done and you move it to the next week or you kind of reprioritize. Um, it's also a great time when you're re when you're doing this reassessment piece to connect with your stress levels, to think about what your week or your day felt like to you, like connecting with your emotions and your feelings, not just your, you know, the machine in you being productive. Um, but you can make some changes and make some ad adjustments. Maybe it's adding more buffer time into specific areas or specific time blocks so that you can feel good as you mm -hmm. move through your week. More snack time. That's very <laughs> yeah. important. Yes. I also think what's wonderful about having a system like this is that you start to see how you're spending your time. And I think this is really important as artists because it's so easy to have our time sucked away from us. And it's so easy to um, get distracted. So having these priorities set out and having a plan um, and not just being at home, like I always find when I'm, you know, I work from home, I'm a, I'm an artist, I'm an entrepreneur. All of a sudden other people around me don't think of me as working nine to five. And yep. I tried to explain to them. So having a plan where I have these time blocks really helped me stick to it. Our time is our greatest asset. We can't get it back. So seeing this mapped out at the end of the week, the reassessment is about seeing, is my time being a used as a useful resource or am I, you know, letting it slip in different ways? So I just think it's really important. Precious. Yeah. 
Yeah. And to Jamie, just to wrap up with that point, I, I just want to put the reminder out there that, you know, an episode like this, where we're talking about strategies and tips for helping you time block is, is a gentle reminder for you to name what matters in your life and to spend your time the way you want. Like we're, Mm -hmm. we're not trying to help you be more productive necessarily. We're wanting you to connect with that greatest asset of your life that is your time and really live the life you want and spend your time the way that you want and do it in a thoughtful, intentional way. Um, So we hope this episode was super helpful for you as you consider implementing this magical tool, this strategy of time blocking into your life as a busy artist. Please connect with us and join our community of thriving artists. We would love to get to know you. You can learn more about our community at thrivetogethernetwork.com. And Jamie and I hope that you follow us on Instagram at Thrive Together Network. And as always, we are here for you. We are cheering you on. We believe in the work that you are doing. Your work is important and your time is important. And we're so excited for you for this week. And thank you for listening to our episode. 